just for fun, we're going to go to table 14. Table 14. <laughs> okay, so All I'm right. going to go ahead and hit start. Yep. And you can say that the pairings are up. Oh, Selesnia humans. And where are we going in? So Candy Daniel's in the waiting room. Sweet. Against zombie. Oh my God, that's amazing. Go? Yeah, and he's in time shift today. That's awesome. Yeah, I and I'm only. Am I... Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, am I good to say the round is live? Yes, yeah. please. I, I posted it already. Damn. There we go. Uh, so these are two uh, opponents that uh, have been long. Uh, they've been with the BO3 Cup tournament for a very long time. Uh, and since we're here, I'm just going to show everyone what Candy Daniel won in terms of sleeves for his prizes. It looks like... Uh, oh, it looks like... Uh, Gideon and a white planeswalker. Oh, what was that oh, old yeah. one? Ooh. Uh, she was six mana and used to make one ones. Uh, Elspeth? Yeah, it looks like Elspeth. It looks Ooh, like Elspeth. Yeah. Definitely looks so, like Elspeth. Don't know if you guys caught it. Candy Daniel yelling at zombie. Can't believe it. <laughs> well, because we, they're actually not only are they BO3 members from the beginning, but they're also friends of ours in real life. Yes. So, Hell yeah. <laughs> that's the only reason I picked that table is because it's not very often they get paired against each other. This will be a banger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will. Die. For sure. No, this is going to be an awesome uh, second round. Oh my God, I got to change the title. Round number two. My my worst thing is that I always forget to change the round number. Oh, that's... updating the titles? Yes. <laughs> All right. So it's looking like zombies on the play? Yes, please. Man, let's see these lists. Yeah, pretty similar. We've got... So it looks like Candy Daniel is playing more of an aggressive style to this Orzhov list. More of an Orzhov aggro or Orzhov kind of tempo where Zombie is playing more of the traditional Orzhov control. A little bit more sack. So let's see how this one plays out. I mean, right now it's not looking like much is going on for Zombie in terms of hand. So it's Selesnia humans, but I see red. I don't know what the red's for. Selesnia humans, where are you? Uh, I could be in the very wrong match. We're oh, watching Zombie and Candy Wow, Daniel, 14. Right? <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Yeah, I went to the wrong table. Oh, that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Yay for me. So, Zombies draw on their wolf. Uh, they will probably find the mana for it to be able to cast it. Which is great. I mean, Banishing Verse is a clean answer to Lulf, but not before some spiders come down. Mm -hmm. uh, wedding announcement. Farewell is a new card in uh, the standard meta. Uh, and I think it's the perfect card for this meta. Uh, it exiles creatures, artifacts, and enchantments. It doesn't touch Planeswalkers, unfortunately. But... Um, since there is a brand new archetype of Selesnia enchantments, uh, I think this is an amazing card to have in your main board uh, against most decks, actually. Yeah, and I was kind of alluding to uh, a green, blue, and then white kind of splash mm -hmm. as a band control style deck. Farewell is just a good card. Like, it's, it's going to be yep. very relevant. It's going to be very relevant and standard going forward. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, it is unfortunate that it doesn't hit hits plane walk hit planeswalkers though. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, we'll see what the new ob Nixilis will be in new Cabetta, and we'll see kind of what we're gonna be presented with in terms of other planeswalkers. But the power level of the planeswalkers that we're seeing are are pretty high. Yeah, and we we're gonna lose some eventually at rotation when September rolls around or October. Yes. So we'll we'll be losing cards like Lolf. Um, Nissa. 
this is not seeing much play outside of the deck that I uh, that I took a look at. No, uh, it's not. Yeah, we're gonna lose like Kaya the Inexorable. Um, we'll we'll lose Tibble. So I do think the power level of the Planeswalkers being played right now is leaning more towards what's gonna be live in in a post rotation standard, which is actually pretty exciting to see. Yeah, I find that uh, I'm always a huge fan of eight set standard. I know that some people don't enjoy it. Uh, myself, though, uh, like the, we're at that point in standard and the season, like the year, where um, Kamigawa is not only going to be a defining set, but like from this point until the end of the year, unless a set is super powerful and changes the way um, standard is played. Uh, the decks that we're starting to see now are only going to be refined with more powerful cards from other sets moving forward, uh, and this is where this is this is the kind of standard I love playing. Yeah, we've got all of these lists that are already refined that don't have that many slots, and sure, new sets will come out and archetypes will be born, but we're kind of uh, we're we're in a really sweet spot where we've got. <laughs> A lot of pow like a lot of powerful decks. We've got these Orzov lists that are really well tuned and may find a new piece. I don't think the structure of these decks will change all that much. Yeah. And then we've got yeah this new Selesnya deck. Like I think enchantments. I think there's a lot of room for enchantments, and I think there might be room for a Golgari style enchantment deck when you're looking at cards like uh, the binding binding the old gods and pairing yeah. that with Kami of Transients. So there's, I don't know, there's a lot of potential. I'm, I'm very excited to see, like this format is still so new. It's been out for a week. Yes. And we've got new cards supplementing uh, some of these decks that have established themselves. Yeah. And then we've also got a lot of just super, super exciting potential archetypes. Like I, I think there's this Rakdos deck using Oni Call Time Ball. And if I played in this event today, I probably would be playing that. Uh, Farewell is definitely a, a, a problem for that deck, but that's okay. Um, yeah. Like what what we are gonna see is just a whole lot of exciting stuff, and I can't wait to see the new changes uh, as these lists evolve. And yeah, eventually we get to eight set standard where the power level is just like where it's here right now. It's already pretty high. It's gonna be way up here. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be nuts. I agree. I totally agree. And I do, yeah. So Candy Daniel's list is. Did you see that? That was concession. It's impressive. Oh yeah. And I, I, yeah. I would be very surprised if Candy Daniel. Okay, so there is no Redain. And I, I'm a little surprised to see no Redain. Just in the side, as a way to kind of counter through some of these biggie, some of these bigger spells, biggie spells, uh, bigger spells. And ways to just tax your opponent, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Like I, I, even even making Rite of Oblivion cost five out of the yard does make a difference, especially when you're sacking your creature. Uh, and then Redain like soft countering these planeswalkers is just kind of nutty. Candy Daniels likes to build his own decks, eh? Yeah, yeah. He, it's the way to be. Yeah, <laughs> he, he it's not very often he'll net deck uh, deck. Um, I I really like zombies approach to magic like uh he was at 19 or 20 life and he conceded game one um he's been playing long enough and uh through several formats like he plays modern pioneer uh obviously historic and standard uh, i played against him uh at our local game store uh quite often um and he sees the game like as soon as he realizes that like he's too far behind he just moves on to the next game he doesn't try and grind it out um i know that's not always the right call but um i really respect someone who sees what's happening and where they are in a game and knows when to pull the trigger and just move on you know yeah sometimes the, the clock is just too important or you don't want to sometimes i mean when you're playing closed deck list stuff and you have the potential to keep some hidden information to, from your opponent, that's kind of the move. Uh, I'm I'm a snap concede guy. You've seen me play. Yeah. <laughs> if, if something's going wrong, I'm like, okay, let's go next. 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the complete opposite because I believe, you know, I, I was my uh, Yoda to magic. Uh, he said, you know, you, you just never know what you top deck and it could change the whole game. You know, it could be that one card that you needed. So, yeah, I mean, you're, you're definitely not wrong with that one. There's a, uh... ooh, I, I like that eye twitch off the top. Same. So yeah, I'm, I'm still watching zombie. I, I think it depends on the list that I'm playing. If I'm playing my combo decks and I know there's just no way that I can squeak a win out, then I'm I'm just happy to just move on. Right. Uh, if I'm playing, I think I think Hive of the Eye Tower rank comes down here. Um, if I'm playing something where I might be able to find something and can kind of grind out two or three turns, I'm less of a snap concede kind of guy now, and I will play to my outs. Mm -hmm. um, and I've learned that's more often the best move. Right. But it does take patience. Sometimes oh. I don't have that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Spellbinder here, uh, I mean, it's totally going to take uh, the Wanderer. Uh, top decking a uh, Meat Hook Massacre, I think, is great. So Meat Hook Massacre really comes into play here. I See, I would swing with the Eye Twitch first. Oh, no, okay. So you can gas, kill the Spellbinder. And then, still getting a treasure out of yeah. it. Draw two cards. Hope you find a land. Actually, Shambling Gas ain't bad either. I wouldn't cast it here, though. So next turn, a threat can come down. Massacre can pick it off. Eye Twitch can find you and Enviro Sciences, and then you have a Shambling Gas. So I think Zombie's in a pretty okay spot right now. Wandering Emperor is going to come down eventually. Uh, I do want to talk again I do want to talk again about um, farewell <laughs> I see zombie letting candy Daniel know that the future <laughs> hello candy Daniel <laughs> Yeah, I do want to say though, farewell is just is just gas. It's gonna be so good. It's looking like the zombie is playing two copies of farewell, and it'll just be very very relevant all the way through this match. Is every every permanent on the board outside of the four planeswalkers uh, Candy Daniel is running gets sniped by farewell, and that exile was so relevant. Nice little turn sequence here. Shambly Gas is coming down. It's definitely going to be a catch-up card. A farewell. Come from behind, you know? Well, if it's on a Ramshell, yeah. Funnily enough, like, these these black base decks that have Shambling Gas and uh, little ways to just generate treasure through Deadly Dispute, get to that six mana point. Like, that's how Blood on the Snow was so successful. Yeah. I'm actually surprised we don't see that card. So am I. I've seen I've seen on my Twitter a few people having success with uh, with those black snow decks, but few and far between. Well, if you take ores off, right, and you just make all the mana blood uh, like snow, you're just replacing farewell with blood on the snow, uh, or having a couple of each, right? Like I, I, depending on the matchup you're in, there's so much value in that card and re reoccurring you know, your Planeswalker or an important anything in your, from your graveyard is just, Oh yeah. Like having your graveyard as another uh, component to the board. I mean, we've seen in other formats, how powerful that is. I mean, decks, there are a lot of decks that just rely on having your graveyard, right? Like you look at Rakdos Arcanist or, exactly. or something like Dragonstorm. Absolutely. Yeah, I think, I actually am going to work on a new style of Dragonstorm relying on uh, playing out of the deck as well. So there's some potential to rely less on the graveyard, but we'll see. I was going to say, there are a lot of decks that kind of incidentally play with the graveyard. Like, sure, we have this Rite of Oblivion that's going to get flashback. Yeah. But 
what Blood on the Snow doesn't do is interact with permanents like the Wedding Announcement and Meat Hook mm. Massacre and some other really important cards in the format where we have a card like Farewell that just, it kind of snipes everything. Like, if you think about Mono Green as a deck and having Ranger Class and Essica's Chariot and, and not necessarily cards in the graveyard, but even like... Um, what is it? The troll that enchants a land. Like, that hits all of it. Mm, right. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I see what you mean. I see what you're saying, yeah. And it's just it, such a powerful spell. Like, I don't know. I, I, I find it hard to ignore powerful spells. Oh, yeah. absolutely. So this wedding announcement is going to come down. Nice little trade. Uh, what is really nice about um, Meat Hook Massacre and Rite of Oblivion if you have multiple massacres, you can just sack one. Like, mm. it's a board wipe. It's a permanent you can sack. Yeah. It's it's just really nice. Yeah, these decks are very well tuned. I'd say, if anybody is kind of getting into the standard format and just wants to pick something up that's already not not play yourself, but like very powerful and just kind of easy to pick up and play. The Orzov lists are just so nice. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. I really like that Fracture. I really, really like that Fracture. That was a really good play. Um, yeah, and Fracture is, I think, more and more going to be that premier card where we see all of these Planeswalkers coming through. Uh, if you're thinking about cards like Kaito Shizuki and the Wandering Emperor, yeah. Fracture hits those. Vanishing Verse doesn't hit Kaito. Vanishing Verse doesn't hit Hanada. I mean, Fracture doesn't hit Hanada either. But I think, like, the versatility of Fracture is more and more, like, it's going to hit Edgar's Coffin, too. Um, just that versatility in Fracture can be very, very relevant uh, in this format going forward. So let's see, these little life-linking vampires are going to be so annoying. Well, I was just thinking, like, it, 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 it's allowing him to keep his life total up, keep the board sort of maintained. Uh, it's hard to get around. You need evasion creatures at this point. Yeah, I mean, this Edgar is just kind of going to hang out. That's the best way to describe it right now. Like, you can make a little trade like I don't see this hive really doing all that much and there's no way this uh, massacre is going to come down and, and really affect the board so what I think we're going to see well I don't know what that was so he's attacking with both and <laughs> looks like he's going to be able to do this massacre for one and clear the board hey I like that it's a tricky little, uh, tricky little block. I don't know if I would have taken that. I think at this point, the damage is just better mm -hmm. to, t to like to take. Like sure, Edgar's coffin is gonna make a one-one. Announcement's gonna make a card in your hand. So we'll see. Spellbinder's gonna whiff. Totally whiff. But at this yeah. point of the game, I think that's fine. Uh, what zombie has? that Candy Daniel does not is this Field of Ruin. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think I really like uh, holding this Fell Stinger up, letting this wedding announcement just pop. Sure, we're going to take three from Elite Spellbinder, but Fell Stinger coming down, getting rid of the 1-1 one, one next turn. Yeah, I wouldn't attack here. Just because you can also trade your Edgars, and then you're kind of on a vampire loop. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what? Like, uh, Zombie. I think Zombie is in a bit of a better position just because Zombie has these farewells. And Candy Daniel has two fractures. Zombie has two farewells. I think both decks are running three right of Oblivion. Actually, looks like Candy Daniel's not running any. Uh, four Vanishing Verse instead, so that doesn't hit uh, the coffins. So, at this point, the coffins are going to be the biggest. See, I'm surprised here. I would have let that 1-1 resolve. 
But another oh, wedding wow. announcement. Or a sword is nice. If he goes wedding announcement into Soren on the next turn, I think that's a powerful play. Yeah, I think so too. Have a 3-4 blocker, 2-2-2s. Two, two, yeah. I don't think you're at a point in the game where you want to trade your 2-2s two, for, uh, for that Edgar, but you'll get your sword. You're going to have a 4-5 vampire. That's pretty wild. Wow. Counter's probably going to come down on Edgar, so we're going to pose a clock. But the coffin's going to make a 1-1. One, one. Which is a three-three life linker. Asper like here is good. Like, yeah, like this Edgar's just gonna swing, and this five damage is gonna be absolutely irrelevant. So now we have a three-three life linking. Oh, sorry, a two-two because -two, that announcement hasn't flipped yet. Soren's gonna come down. We're gonna make Adding three, another two-three. Yeah, it also has life link, right? Exactly. Yeah. Eye twitch is gonna be a two-two, which is relevant right now. Uh, this, like, this Luminarch Aspirant is a magic card. Um, I do like these attacks. You're going to draw a card off your wedding announcement. Feel mm. the Ruin picking off this Hive. I was just going to say that. And there goes the... F yeah. Yeah, I like, how many fields is um, Zombie playing? I mean, it's just the one. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you need, though. It, it totally is. I think I think one to two is where you want to be in a deck like this, where you've got Wandering Emperor and Sora and, which are, and Meat Hook Massacre, which are double pip cards. But yeah, just like get this Light Twitch down. You've got another blocker. It's going to get you value. Uh, there's a mascot exhibition. Like that card's just going to be nuts. Soul Transfer? So zombie... What is that? Oh, so, okay. So Soul Transfer is awesome. If you control an artifact and enchantment, you get both modes. Uh, you exile a creature or planeswalker. And from there, if you have both, you can also return a creature uh, from your graveyard to your hand. There's a question being asked, sweet and salty. I'm just bringing... Uh, I have the ability to uh, bring up cards uh, bigger so the chat can see oh, it. Unreal. I just brought up uh, soul... <laughs> Transfer. And you thought I could answer? Uh, I I can't see the question. Oh, hold on. Maybe I'll just go. Yeah, soul transfer is a sweet, sweet magic card. It's a little slow, sorcery speed, uh, but just being able to get both modes for these Orzhov decks, which are always going to have an enchantment and sometimes have an egg, uh, an artifact with uh, with the coffin. If they're playing a few more artifacts, you get maximum value out of that. Then you're just kind of uh, in the sweet zone. But like, Edgar's a relevant card. Yes, what? They asked two questions. Can we restart and get back to two of them? Wow. Alright, so Soren's gonna find a land, which is fine. It's just card gen just generating card advantage. So Soul Transfer now, yeah, it's I guess you don't even have to exile. Mean Hook Massacre. Not Mean Hook Massacre. Uh, that was such a great play. Yeah, but like the mascot exhibition is just where you want to be, right? Oh, and then a wolf off the top. Mm. Oh, wow. Looking pretty good. Yeah, and that's going to be game two. Ooh. Did so you? those Edgars out of the side for zombie are... It, it, it was just gas. And I really like bringing these farewells back in now. Uh, just being able to snipe Candy Daniels, Edgar's, uh, Rite of Oblivion. I would be getting rid of the Vanishing Verse um, on Candy Daniels' side. And I'll see. I'll flip over to their sideboarding in just a sec. Um, I think the Rite of Oblivion is going to be a little bit more relevant because it does hit uh, Candy Daniels, Edgar's. But there are just so many threats in both of these decks. Both of these are, are pretty threat heavy. Uh, I'm going to switch over to Candy Daniels. They're going to be on the play for game three. They are. And yeah, looking at sideboarding, I don't love the four vanishing verse in the main. No, I don't uh, either. Yeah, it's looking like Candy Daniel also has the two farewells, and I'd be bringing those in if I were them. Um, Duress, I'm pretty medium on. It does hit winning announcement, and it does hit Meat Hook Massacre, and 
Candy Daniel's playing a little bit more of a uh, um, tempo-y creature style deck. Which is but fine it does look with, like a lot of those creatures are gone. Yeah, I just find with uh, Duress, like, uh, you get to a point in this mat kind of matchup where you guys, they're top decking, and Duress just gets around all that. Yeah. Like, sorry, top decking means, like, Duress is a dead card. Yeah, it whiffs. It whiffs a lot. Yeah. It whiffs a lot in these matchups. So, let's see. I mean... <laughs> Love watching the banner. Candy Needles deck list of fun police. Great. Yeah. It's been playing out that way, that's for sure. For sure. I like this. I would and keep I mean, this. Yeah, I gotta say, like, you'll you, you love to see it. The sportsmanship is excellent. Uh, obviously, these guys are buddies, which is great. And just looking at Candy Daniel's hand, Fracture Verse, like, the curve is so nice. Yeah. Getting your man lands down first, so they're coming in untapped, also feels so nice for the both of them. I'm I'm pretty hyped. And we've still got, I think we've still got the Valkyries uh, in the main for Candy Daniel. So we've got double black, we'll have access to the red. Announcement on curve is always great. Let's see, is it going to be announcement into announcement? It sure is. <laughs> Do you, uh, ooh, that's a nice little play. Wow. Aspirant here is going to allow uh, Candy Daniel to have the advantage in combat, at least for this turn. What what Aspirant actually does is, yes, you win the advantage in combat, and on top of that, you have your mana for Fracture Reverse, depending on what comes down. Right. Or you could just Fracture this announcement and get rid of it. Right. Uh, I would probably verse the announcement, honestly, just because it's a little less versatile in this matchup. But this situation that Candy Daniel is in right now is pretty wild. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to quickly sneak over and take a look at uh, what Zombie has got going on right now. He definitely has I a mean, lot of zombies, cards. Zombie's hand is also pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, we've, got, we've got a lot of nice options. We've got a lot of really nice cards. So this is just a nice and exciting one. I'm going to pop back over to Candy Daniel. And, oh, I hit the wrong stream. I, I do see something crazy going on in another matchup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just saw a ridiculous board state. I, I feel like I was just watching something I shouldn't have been. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. And, yeah, I mean, the Fracture hitting wedding announcement is great. Uh, board state right now, I mean, we have the information. We know what Zombies got going on, and I know what's about to come down. Uh, it starts with an M, and it ends in an Eat Hook Massacre. Oh, I'm surprised! Even I could guess that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm surprised not to see that Massacre come down, only because we're going to continue to generate value here. And if Massacre came down, at least Zombie would be at essentially an empty board and playing from playing from zero with way more cards in hand yeah. than Candy Daniel has. But we'll see. Hmm. So a chump here. I just don't think Zombie's going to be playing. I mean, okay, so sure, Deadly Dispute. But the problem is, if you're playing to the Farewell, Soren comes down. And gets around all that. Yeah, and the next turn it's just another card. Yeah. Sure, Freeland. And announcement's gonna get so the zombie's gonna wipe the board here with farewell. Exiling everything. Um. Or Meat Hook Massacre comes down for four. If zombie has the land at hand, yeah, I mean at this rate, yeah, so the farewell comes down. I think that's the better value play. But here we have the sword now generating creatures or card advantage. Yeah. The rest in the open lane. Damn. I think I think the take is actually going to be the right of oblivion here. As you're making it cost four, you're going to lose your Soren. So Soren, you probably just want to play a creature. I don't know, we'll see. I don't think soul transfer is the correct take. Uh, it's a, a slower spell. It is a slower and spell. There we go. 
We're just gonna pull Soul Transfer up again. Right of Oblivion uh, so. removes Soren, right? That's what we. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so it, it is how I was saying it. Um, that Spellbinder was a really nice find off the top. I mean, there's there is a potential world where this Soren's just gonna dome zombie for thirteen. What? That would be amazing to see. I gotta be honest. I don't think it's gonna happen unless we, like, even if we tax this right of Oblivion, I twitch Oblivion comes down and Soren's gone. Yeah. And then you're gonna get the four mana cast out of it anyway. So, we're in kind of a tricky spot. I, I like, looking at the board state right now and just seeing where Zombie's hand is, like, what do you tax? The welcoming vampire? Sure. Do you tax the eye twitch? No. Sure. So eye twitch being three mana, if zombie top decks a land, we're looking at welcoming vampire eye twitch. You have a blocker for the spellbinder. Oh my god. And you're gonna draw a card. Yep. So we'll see. I actually just kind of like the play. I would have liked to play that land untapped. I was surprised he didn't do. He didn't uh, follow your line of sight. Uh, obviously, he might see something different. But I mean, playing the right of oblivion and getting Soren off the board now is fine. Uh, but there are just so many potential plays because you yeah. go welcoming vampire eye twitch. You're down three life. You're, you're up a card and have a blocker in the sky. And no matter what, this vanishing verse isn't going to hit everything. Soren can uptick one more time, sure. Um, but then you play wedding announcement the next turn. And you're just generating more and more card card advantage. Uh, these lands are just kind of blanks, but Candy Daniel is slowly pl posing a clock. And I think this Hive of the Eye Tyrant is going to come down and eat this Rite of Oblivion. Yeah, I think that's the move. So swinging in for six, and then also having that Vanishing Verse is quite nice. Uh, if Wedding Announcement or Welcoming Vampire come down. Uh, what I think the play is going to be is Welcoming Vampire, Pest Summoning on the stack, Vanishing Verse, the Welcoming Vampire. <laughs> this chat is great. <laughs> So let's see. I mean, that's the line I would take. Vampire into Pest Summoning, draw a card, have a Flying Blocker. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to get that. Interesting. Okay, so Massacre comes down for one. And then is it Wedding Announcement? I mean, you Wedding Announcement... Okay, sure, so you bait the Vanishing Verse. You're going to take three next turn on the swing. But it depends on what Candy Daniel draws now. Oh. Oh no. So that pest summoning is gone. Oh, that wandering emperor is gone. Oh yeah, for sure. Interesting. I mean, these pests are gonna just kind of clog up the ground, which is fine. And at least this welcoming vampire will start drawing some cards. This field of ruin, uh, that zombie scene again, is gonna be very relevant. But I think... I think the take is Wandering Emperor only because you can flash it in and then get rid of another one of these man lands uh, with the minus two. I, I think it would be, yeah, I think that's the correct take. Play the Hive Tapped. Eventually you're going to be swinging in with two um, man lands. But right now get in for three more. Exile a card out of the yard. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah, the other part is not uh, relevant in this for sure, but I mean... I just like eating up people's graveyards. It's just such a nice feeling. You got less cards. <laughs> oh, exactly. And you never know. I mean, there aren't that many graveyard recursive spells right now. No. Uh, bringing stuff back, but it's it's always relevant. It's always relevant to pick the right card. So that Fracture is going to come in very handy for Candy Daniel uh, later in this match. But I'm yep. just going to quickly sneak over to Zombie to see what they drew. Don't forget everyone in the chat, BO3 Cup, uh, sorry, just exclamation part, 
uh, BO3, and you will put your name in to win a promo pack of Acoria. Uh, I will mail it out to anywhere in the world. Uh, also, you have to be a follower to get a ticket. Uh, if you sub the channel, then you can get two tickets and up your chances. Uh, I think they're cool. I've seen some really amazing pulls out of these stuff. And it's Heck all yeah. free. I like the board get state the, here. Get those giveaways. Yeah, I, uh, Sweet and Salty and I are, are all about uh, doing whatever we can for the community to make it fun, interesting, and interactive. And We just want everybody to be, uh, be able to play a part, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I, I love being a part of this. I, I'm already having such an excellent time in every event that I can play in with you guys. I always... I always try to make a point of it. Uh, I truly cannot stress enough how much you guys give to the community and how much you guys have done. It's it's really amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Hey, did, um, did you win in the last arena invite thingy that you played? Uh, I Did I play? Not for us, uh, but you played in the, the big one. No, I was 5-0 and oh, and then just fell off. I, I tilted off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of pro players, like, they would go 0 2 and then drop, which oh, I, yeah. I understand. Um, because once you lose your first match or two, you're just fighting an uphill battle. But I almost feel like it's worse to go, like, 5 and 0 and then, you know, you lose your last three matches and you just don't even get in. That's exactly what happened. I was, I was 5 0 one more win and I was in for top eight yeah. and yeah unfortunately I just didn't get there I was on a roll and then just kind of lost my train of thought and it happens yeah oh for um, sure it's it's it, it was really nice for me to at least like I built the deck five minutes before the tournament it was no like a, way. Little, a little mix of, I, that's that's my big problem I do that a lot <laughs> <laughs> uh I have ideas and then I just build something like that, that's feeling good or nice so I gotta get out of that habit a little bit, but I mean, it does it does at least reinforce a little bit of uh, of my passion for this game and and my skill. I just have to be a, a little bit more considerate of my own time and give myself a better chance of winning with with a clear seventy five instead of like sixty cards that I know are good and fifteen that I'm unsure about. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm on the whole opposite that like. I won't play a tournament if I'm not comfortable with the deck. Like, I have to play it and know it and, um, you know, like, I want to know, I want to have a, a plan in my head for my cards, because even though it's just standard and I realize we're not playing eternal formats, um, you know, a card or two can change a game. Oh, it's, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And I, I find the people that put the work in are usually... Uh, it, it's usually paid off. I yeah, I fully agree. And when I did my pro tour testing, I had a couple of teams for testing. Uh, the second one I didn't have uh, as big of a team for it, but I put in hours and hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And yeah. I felt very good about where I ended up and, and how I was doing, and obviously that paid off. Like mm -hmm. I day two in top hundred, uh, the Strixhaven yeah, Championship, which is great. That's quite an accomplishment. Something you should be very proud of. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the next goal is going to be top 64, and then from there, uh, top 32, top eight. Yeah. We'll see. But it's 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 all in the preparation. I just like I've gotten into a better habit of cleaning up the decks that I have on my arena. I used to have like 40, <laughs> and now I just have five or six that I kind of like rotate through and like and, and continue tuning. Yeah. And then if I have an idea, I'll, I'll add something else. Right. Um. Just doubling back to the game. Candy Daniels. What I was talking about earlier, yeah, Candy Daniels is just kind of on the ropes here. Totally. Uh, this welcoming vampire has provided so much value. Yeah. Um, what was missed was uh, Candy Daniel had a trigger for a fracture while wedding announcement was on the stack and could have done it uh, before that uh, before that trigger at the end of main phase two, but unfortunately they missed that. That netted a card, and I think that card was the Edgar that's yep. now kind of just going to turn this game around. Uh, yeah. 
Like there aren't there aren't many great blocks. Like no, sure, a hive can come down. Soul Shatter is relevant. It gets rid of Edgar. So now Elite Spellbinder can block the Welcoming Vampire. But it might just be a little too late. I'd swing with the house. Oh, absolutely. Like, I, I would have brought them all in here. But it's looking like we have a hive. I can't see him trying to trade the, for the hive because he'd have to double block it. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. I mean, sure, you get rid of a 1 1, you're still going to get drained for one. And then losing your 3 1 to a 1 1 just feels bad. Absolutely. So does that mean he's going to take 5 here? It, it does. It sure looks like it. Now, are we going to see an end step soul shatter? Get rid of this Edgar. Will it yeah, still see, trigger? I attacked in. I'd, um, you won't. Uh, the, the 1 1's on upkeep. Oh, ah, right. Hmm. So yeah. let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the soul shatter is coming down. Edgar is going to go. Well, it's something. I mean, what what could be best? I mean, Meat Hook Massacre would be great. Oh. That's also really nice. <laughs> it resets the board. Wow. Unfortunately. Yeah, sure swing, in, swing in with the Spellbinder. Oh, no. One, two. If he does that, he just loses on board. Yep. Oh, brutal. Right? Does he have enough mana to activate a high? Oh, it's not no, going to matter. No, Daniel would have needed one more land, but it doesn't matter because they both have Menace. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's looking like a, a cheeky little swing here. Oh, that farewell. So close. So close. Heck of a match. Creature lands, eh? I know. I mean, they're, they're so relevant. And when you have powerful creature lands like these... You just can't go wrong. Yeah, I, I I agree with playing this out. Like you kind of don't have a choice to do this, but I also am a firm believer he's just dead on board anyway. I mean, we'll see. I mean, sometimes people make misplays. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like you never know. I mean, both of them have the mana to activate both. Of them. What? <laughs> Why not just go for lethal? Wow, so he misplayed is what we're seeing? Yeah, it sure is. Okay. Oh my goodness, it was lethal. What? That, that's what you mean, though. Like, misplays happen. He's going to kick himself back. Well, I mean, it's a, it looks like Zombie's just kind of trying to kick trying to kick Candy Daniel here. Uh, with Even with these two mana spiders, it's, it's still lethal. So we can have one swing in, we can have two swing in. Everything has to block. I don't know, we'll see. But Lolf will be able to make more spiders. Mascot exhibition can come down. I mean... Oh, what an unfortunate miss, eh? Like, this, yeah, this could be over. Yeah, like straight lethal on board, yeah. yeah. We'll see, we'll see how blocks line up. Interesting. I mean, it just means we get more magic, which is always more fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, especially at the rate I'm trying to find other ones to go to. <laughs> is it? Is there a possibility that if he had activated his creature lands, he would double block them? Oh, I guess not. I think it doesn't matter. Because I was trying to think of what the crackback would have been, and he still would have only taken three at the most and be at one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If there were three hives, it would have been a different story. Right. So yeah, we have the double block here. I mean, Zombie is at an, a position in this game. Maybe he just wants to keep it as close as possible. <laughs> Maybe. You see the good game concessions, does that mean... like? I'm, I mean, I'm sure Candy Daniel's going to scoop it up here. But you know what? Props to Candy Daniel for not scooping it up. Because sometimes opponents just do... Uh, they have this line in their minds, and that's their way of winning. I actually did this uh, playing in the best of three cup finals when I was playing my Izzet deck. I realized that I had a line to end the game with exact lethal on board, and I played the safer way of resolving my Ugin uh, pre-combat or post-combat wiping the board instead of just pumping my uh, Phoenix a couple of times. I remember that, I think. Thankfully, I still won. Yes. Three cards. Three yeah. cards in my deck. 
That was that was an awesome match though. That was really yeah, fun to sure watch. Yeah, sure was.